in theory, you need to evaluate variable by variable how they how they might be distinct across time. So some in labor market data sets for people over age 25, education doesn't change with probably close to one. Uh, but seasonal variables, obviously. So if you're looking at demand from supermarkets, uh, things. So we've done some work where we assume that the price of a good doesn't change within a month, but then other goods, they go on sale every two weeks or on offer every two weeks, and so they change a lot. So the time window matters a lot for a lot of different variables. Uh, there's, no, there's no general advice. That you just need to evaluate, starting with the most important variables, what is the appropriate time window for, over which they're fixed. And if there some some variables, you need to have continuous time. But you may have, I suppose, other information which gives you good understanding of the seasonal variability, so you could actually do corrections on the variable. Yes, variable yes, variables. yes. Any more questions? Yes, please. I have a really, really basic question, and I apologise for how basic it is. Okay. Um, so, so we've been speaking about some linking data sets, how you might need to weight differently for linking. I've gone out hunting for decent text for non-statisticians on just weighting, okay. just weighting data sets, and I don't find anything that's that's aimed at non-statisticians. Could you uh, possibly send an email to Sophie or something? Yeah. Um, or, or just a, a, a couple of suggestions of some some good. I I don't have a reference on the top of my head, but uh, I'll I'll send an email about that, that yeah lovely. yeah because I, I I had a long conversation with the statistician about the need to wait a particular data set that I was using right. and he was adamant that I needed to do the waiting and then I asked him for advice on how to do it and he was adamant that it was so complicated that he needed to do it and he was also adamant that he didn't have the time to do it <laughs> so uh, I, I was left in a rather awkward position <laughs> of deciding to just not wait the data so when when, when weights are so most statistical software packages will uh, allow you to add weights quite uh, directly. So, for example, if you use Stata. I, I don't like using doing anything unless I know what it is that I'm doing. Yes. Um, and understand precisely of what course. it is that I'm doing. And therefore, I would want to read up on stuff rather than just mucking around in yeah. a statistical package and, and understand what it is that I'm doing. So, also a lot of the statistical, pa statistical packages also have in their some pretty good basic descriptions and references for, for waiting. So st the state of documentation, for example, it's not great, but it, yeah. it's not bad either. I'm um, SPSS. SPSS. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's this. But, but, but broadly speaking, because with, with anything that I'm going to be doing on, with, my, with my data, I want to understand what it is that yes. I'm doing yes. before I it's so easy to just push buttons yes. and, and have something spat out the end and yes. for me to, uh, to actually be producing bullshit. Mm -hmm. so no, absolutely. I, I, I would much rather be absolutely clear on what I have or have not done to the data and so I, I always just tend to read up on the stuff. No, of course, of course. Yeah. Maybe we need another lecture on waiting and you'll treat it neighbor. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions, maybe? I'll entertain you all day on questions. Um, <laughs> the measurement error, um, with in, in the physical sciences, I can see why you might assume that measurement error is symmetrically distributed in Gaussian or something like that. Yes. Is, is there any reason to hold that as a default assumption for um, economic or sociodemographic or other variables, or should you assume that your errors are uh, asymmetrically non you know, asymmetrically distributed? So the question was: Is there any reason to assume that classical measurement error is reasonable in economic and social contexts? And I, I think the answer is no. I think it's almost never reasonable in economic and social contexts. Okay. People assume it because they know what the results are. Right. They know the classical measurement error results. Yeah. Uh, some people have looked at, uh, in different economics literatures, there's some work on the topic. In, in labor economics and in, con in the consumption economics literature, people have studied measurement error in consumption. And they've basically commissioned follow-up surveys to try to establish how big the measurement error is. And 
immediately you see that it's not classical, but there are some common features that, uh, in terms of how it varies with income, for example. So that's true for consumption, but it's probably not going to be true for other things. Uh, yeah. Yes. So following on from that, how do you how do you then deal with non-Gaussian errors? Well, uh, in the if you have an additive model, if if you know what the distribution is, it doesn't matter that it's non-Gaussian. You just plug in the known distribution, so then you're fine. So as long as you have complete knowledge of the distribution, you can proceed. Uh, how else? What else do, can you do? Um, assuming independence though, isn't it? In that that's case. assuming independence yeah. so in some case there are some cases for some variables you can the, the classical measurement error applies so if the variable you're looking at is the mean of something then then it's approximately Gaussian error because it's the mean um, you know I think most people a lot of people ignore the problem and I think the standard for the literature really is to, a lot, in a lot of cases, unless you have some, is to ignore the problem. So it's a, it's a, it's a problem that it contaminates a lot of the, certainly the economics literature. Uh, what should you do is you should uh, find out from your, wh wherever you get your data from, what is known about the measurement errors, especially the important variables in that, in that sample. Uh, ideally, it's uh, at least it's mean it's mean zero, and, and at least the mean is independent of the variables of interest. Um. Yeah, I guess I mean, can you use as, aside from this additive model? Do you just use standard statistical procedure for dealing with error when you're when you have non-Gaussian errors, or is there a whole separate branch of statistics which actually needs to be brought to bear on them? Um, sort of economic and so, again, most people stick to the additive case because it's easier to analyze. But in many cases, you wouldn't think that it's non-additive or that it's additive. Uh, there, are, there are things you can do if it's non-additive, but it's not. So. It's, If, for example, it's non-additive, but you know something not about the distribution of V, but you know something about the distribution of U, then there's things you can do. Uh, there's there's some recent papers in the ec ec econometrics literature that you know provide some ideas for things you can do when you have non-additive measurement error, and I'm sure there's also a lot of papers in the statistics literature for that case as well. Uh, Yeah, so. Any more questions? No? Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know which one, when the, the next lecture, I can't introduce the next lecture because I don't know very much about it.